In the heart of Southeast Asia lies a nation with a hidden strength, quietly evolving into a military powerhouse. Your immediate reaction might be, how is this even possible? The Philippines is a developing country. How could it be a military powerhouse? But don't worry, I'll explain everything. The Philippines unfortunately doesn't get much attention in the media, especially when it comes to its military. So it's understandable if you doubt the idea of it becoming a military superpower. You probably hear about the Philippines when there is news about the South China Sea conflict. A military superpower is a nation that possesses significant military capabilities and influence on a global scale. These countries typically have extensive military budgets, advanced technologies, large standing armies, and the ability to project power far beyond their own borders. They often play crucial roles in international conflict, peacekeeping operations, and global security initiatives. Some examples of military superpowers historically have included the United States, China, and to lesser extent countries like the UK, France, and India. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, are the military forces of the Philippines. It consists of three main service branches, the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy. The President of the Philippines is the Commander-in-Chief of the AFP and forms military policy with the Department of National Defense, an executive department acting as the principal organ by which military policy is carried out while the Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines serves as the overall commander and the highest ranking officer in the AFP. The Filipino Land Forces have a long history, dating back to before the Spanish and American colonial periods. At that time, clans and barangays formed their own armed groups, mainly made up of hunters and warriors, to defend their tribes or engage in battles with neighboring barangays. One significant event was the Battle of Mactan in 1521 when Lapu-Lapu led Filipino forces against the Spanish invaders. Although not organized as a formal army, this event is considered the beginning of the Philippine army. During the Spanish rule, Filipino warriors formed resistance movements to fight for freedom. Emilio Aguinaldo emerged as a prominent leader, eventually declaring Philippine independence in 1898. The Filipino-American War followed resulting in the defeat of the Filipino forces against the superior American military. Despite this, Filipino revolutionaries continued to fight for freedom. After World War II, the Philippine army continued its commitment to peacekeeping efforts, sending troops to support democracy in Korea and Vietnam. The martial law era began in 1972, during which the military operations aimed to prevent insurgency. The army underwent reforms after the Atsa People Power Revolution in 1980s. Recent events such as the Zamboanga Siege in 2013 and the Battle of Marawi in 2017 have tested the army's capabilities. The Army Transformation Roadmap implemented in 2010 focuses on capability upgrades, modernization, and good governance. Believe it or not, the Philippines started developing missiles way back in the 70s. And this leads me to Project Santa Barbara. Project Santa Barbara was a missile program developed under the administration of the Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos during the Cold War. The first successful launch was in 1972. The project was discontinued due to undisclosed reasons. Project Santa Barbara involved the Philippine Navy and a group of scientists. It was conceived amidst the United States withdrawal from its armed forces in Indochina and in anticipation that the US would also withdraw its forces stationed in the Philippines. Under the program, different types of missiles were developed, which are intended to intercept land, sea, and air base threats. There were also plans to export missiles developed under the program to friendly countries. One of the missiles developed was Bong Bong Rocket. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration of the US described the weapon as the Philippines' first liquid propellant rocket. 
The 37 dynamic tests were conducted, with most of the tests conducted on Kabbalah Island. The first successful launch under the project involved the Bong Bong rocket. The Philippine government has given the green light to a revamped military upgrade plan named Rehorizon 3, which will involve spending up to 60 billion USD over the next decade. Approved by President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., Rehorizon 3 marks the final phase of a three-part modernization effort that began in 2013, driven by tensions in the South China Sea. Under this plan, Manila aims to increase its acquisition of modern weapons and equipment to enhance its defense capabilities against emerging threats. The Philippine defense market's growth heavily relies on the ongoing modernization program of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, which began in 2012, and is expected to continue until 2040. Furthermore, the Philippines is the largest recipient of U.S. grant assistance or defense in the Pacific region, receiving approximately 50 million USD annually for purchasing defense equipment and services. While the U.S. is a significant supplier of defense equipment to the Philippines, it faces tough competition from countries like Israel, South Korea, Turkey, Italy, Spain, France, and Germany. Army Transformation Roadmap 2040 The Army Transformation Roadmap, or ATR, which was officially launched in 2010, is the embodiment of the Philippine Army's aspiration to transform itself into a world-class army that serves the Filipino people and secures the land. It's an 18-year strategic plan with reform initiatives intended to set a strategic direction for the Philippine Army to achieve its vision of becoming a world-class army. So, how is the Philippines planning to become a military superpower? The Philippine military is planning to boost its modernization efforts by buying new and advanced equipment. This to make sure that it's ready to handle different security threats and protect the country's borders. They'll be getting the latest weapons, gear, and technology that suit the changing threats they face. This upgrade covers all branches of the military and focuses on what they need to do their jobs better. Philippine Air Force The Philippines and South Korea are finalizing a deal worth 4 billion USD for the sale of 30 FA-50 light fighter jets from Korea Aerospace Industries to the Philippines. This is a government-to-government -government agreement. Also, the Philippine Air Force is getting ready to buy 12 AW-109 Power Light Twin helicopters. These helicopters will be used for various tasks like online security and support. The Department of National Defense is progressing with the purchase of 10 new medium lift fixed wing aircraft for the Air Force. This comes with an initial support package. Additionally, they're planning to buy six full motion flight simulators along with support services. The Philippine Air Forces is looking into different options for its next generation of fighters, which may include aircraft like the JAS-39, F-16C, F-15E. Furthermore, the Philippines wants to buy 15 more combat utility helicopters. These helicopters are Bell 412S. They are expected to come from Canada. The Philippine Navy plans to purchase more frigates. The Jose Rizal and Antonio Luna are two multi-role frigates acquired from South Korea. The Philippine Navy will purchase additional six frigates by 2040. These frigates are equipped with advanced sensors, weapon systems, and communication suits. These frigates are capable of conducting anti-air, anti-surface, and anti-submarine warfare operations. Features include surface-to-air missiles, anti-ship missiles, torpedoes, and a variety of naval guns. Corvettes The Jacido class and Dil Pilar class corvettes serves as the backbone of the Philippine Navy's surface fleet. These vessels are versatile platforms used for patrol, surveillance, and maritime interdiction operations. Equipped with medium-range naval guns, anti-craft guns, and anti-ship missiles, capable of conducting a wide range of missions, including maritime law enforcement and territorial defense. Patrol vessels. 
The Philippine Navy operates a variety of patrol vessels, including the Islander class and Cyclone class ships. These vessels are designed for coastal patrol, search and rescue, and maritime surveillance missions. Equipped with light naval guns, machine guns, and communication equipment, amphibious assault vehicles. The Philippine Navy maintains a fleet of amphibious assault vehicles, includes landing craft utility or LCU and multi-purpose attack craft, capable of transporting troops, vehicles and supplies from ship to shore. Can the Philippines become a military superpower?